I was raised to believe in genius. We all have some, and we all got some. We were all given some. It's whether or not we find it. All art is valuable. All art is real. All art is real art. There's no such thing as bad art. I'm good for the stuff that they go, okay, this is not for an artist, this is not an architect, this is not a theatrical designer, this is not a retail designer, this is not a mechanic. Who is this? It's Lonnie. All creative processes are the same, and once you know how to create, you can create anything you want. It's just a matter of changing the materials and changing the techniques and changing the level of expertise. If we get started, Hi, I'm Jefferson Arca. I've known Lonnie Hands-On for about 20 years now, and I've seen some amazing art come out of Hands-On Studio. I've always been curious about the process, though, so I asked him if I could bring my cameras along and document his next big project, and lucky for me, uh, he said yes. I uh, was fascinated by what I saw, and I hope you will be too, so um, check it out. Eli Perlman was a seven-year-old boy who died of cancer, and his family wanted to commemorate his life with a work of art. They wanted the artwork installed in, a, in one of his favorite places, which was um, a pool at the Jewish Community Center. After meeting with the family, it was clear that they wanted something that really expressed um, his playfulness and his joyfulness uh, in the world, because he was really, they called him sort of a, a prophet of joy, and that's what they wanted the work to evoke. I think that's why I was awarded the commission is that I, I went through all of the sort of the sad and, and heartbreaking material but ended up in something that was very bright and joyful and celebratory. A really positive piece, not necessarily a memorial. It is a huge glass mosaic, seven and a half feet by 17 feet, all made out of handmade glass pieces. I wanted it to be a living wall in wh which the light would refract through it in a million different ways, um, almost differently every day, so that all the seasonal changes and all of that would, would come into play. It's called Eli's Light. Here we are at the glass studio today. This is where all the magic happens. This is where all the, the glass tile will be made and ground and fired and put together so that we can then lay out the giant puzzle that becomes the mosaic. This looks like it's four or five different layers of things. It's several layers. Okay. What we've done is created from one sheet glass, we've put another iridized sheet glass over the top, and then from all the previous sheets that we've made, that we've broken apart, that are too small for the regular mosaic pieces, we've sprinkled them on. I've never mixed these two colors together before. It's a possibility that when, when they fire next to each other, that one of them is going to give off a chemical and change the color of the, of the other one. That's the chance you take. But is that, I mean, is there any such thing as a mistake here or not? There's no such thing as a mistake. What's all the gear, man? You got the leather press, the shades? Basically, what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, Start pulling stringers out of this is uh, we can use either rod glass or you can cut strips to then get uh, what Bonnie will end up using as stringers. 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 Stringers and noodles, but I always refer to them here in the in the pasta category, where we have angel hair pasta, we have fettuccine, we have the, the flat noodles, we have linguine, and so depending on the colors we want and the sizes and shapes we want, and then we twist all these in torches. You 
don't know what you're going to get. That's part of it. That's, that's part of the process. And there's a possibility it's not going to work. So we're loading pieces into the kiln. The kiln is basically the heating elements, the fire brick, and then a fiber blanket in the bottom. So you put these in, go away, and come back the next morning? Yep. You it's don't have to stand there and mm -hmm. monitor it. No, not with these. Thank goodness, with these uh, kilns, we have computerized controllers on it. So we just kind of program them, tell them what we want them to do, and uh, then they kind of obey. This looks like a finished product. But you're gonna smash this up. Smash this up? Smash some glass. It's, it's actually a little fun. You make an omelet with broken eggs. You don't make it with gorgeous, you know, eggs. You know, all the fragments that you get out of this is just, it's just amazing. Each one of these becomes a little picture. Half of creation is destruction. Now it looks like you've already fired that glass. Why are you? Well, we've we've uh, we've fused this glass. This is several layers of glass and frit and stringer uh, to make the art glass. Now we're firing it a final time to fire polish it to get all of these edges to slightly roll so that it's totally touchable. So what? These are the pieces you smashed. We um, we took that big frit sheet. We busted it up, then we fired them again to fire polish all the edges. We put a rough texture on the back. It's nice and rough so that the glue will, will uh, stick. But man, this is beautiful. There's a lot of dichroic, a lot of layers. 3,000 pieces? No, like no. 30,000. 30,000? Yeah. And each one of these is picked up and rubbed down. Well, yeah, each piece is handled probably six or eight times by the time we get it in there. So what does it make? Probably 400,000 operations. It'll take about 150 or 200 hours to lay it out. So, you know, whenever you want to stop filming, you could like get down here and start putting trial on the things, you know? <laughs> This star is Eli, it's kind of his spirit, it's kind of his soul, it's kind of his star. The family came to work on the project for a couple of hours and it went really well. At first they didn't really know what to do with the materials or what they were supposed to be doing. I was trying to make sort of like, well why don't you just explore the glass, and that wasn't working very well. And then I said, well why don't you fill up the square. Then once they had like parameters to what they needed to work on, then they were a lot more comfortable. It was really pretty wonderful. They all own part of this mosaic now. They all actually touched it and, and put the pieces in, in. They can sort of, they also got a more understanding of the process and how tedious it is. They got to look at all the materials and play with all the glass and so forth. So I think it was a really positive experience. It, it makes sure that they are uh, truly a part of this work and uh, it is supposed to like carry on um, their spirit. So. Artists of any sort are the ones that create the stories, the mythology in which a society lives. I, you know, I don't think, I think it's that simple. We make stuff. We make stuff out of stuff. And whether you make stuff out of words or whether you make stuff out of metal or whether you make stuff out of paint, it doesn't matter. We make stuff. We make stuff, I hope, for the world. It's about the audience, it's about the outside world. It's not about the artist. You know, we're under this guise that it's about the artist. It's not about the artist. Your job is not about you. Your job is about the world. 
it's all done for the reason of communication or the reason of history or the the reason of 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 needing to express I don't think that I don't think that it's done just because uh, we feel like it let's not make this complicated Honey says this is a relatively new kind of art form. Blouse is as old as it comes, but mm -hmm. some of the ways that we're working with it now, I think it's relatively new. Having something be on an outside wall is something I think is very new, especially in you know the Denver, Colorado area with the kinds of winters we have. Yeah. And so that's why we've had to look into some of the mastics, some of the different things that are going to work with this. And that's again why we have so many small pieces in here so that they can expand and contract and keep this whole picture basically together. Okay, that's the main body. That's the last piece in the main body of this. Holy cow, look at all that nitrogen through there. This is beautiful. We put it together, we take it apart. We put it together, we take it apart. We put it together, we put it together, we put it together, we take it apart. So we're taking it apart right now. So we um, letter and grid out everything we've laid up underneath the contract paper. And so that then we're going through and cutting it up in hand, handy sizes so that we can take a piece and have mastic on the wall and get that. Up, laid up into the wall and glued. Let's see. What is your greatest fear about this process from here on out? Well, that we're you know we're transporting thousands of pieces of glass to another place in unsure weather. You know, you have to remember the glass is a super cool liquid and that it expands and contracts a lot. So we kind of want it to be its biggest when we put the grout in between the pieces. method behind these trays? There is. Uh, what Lonnie has assigned is an alphabetic and numeric system. So it's just kind of a cross grid. We're, we're just putting them back piece by piece so that as soon as we start putting the mastic up on the wall, we can just start putting up and uh, have everything stay consistent. It so it shouldn't so be a puzzle, right? It should It should go... It should be a puzzle and it should, <laughs> should go right together like a puzzle. The weather turns out to be absolutely perfect. I was a little worried about rain, but it looks like no rain. We've got uh, slightly overcast. We don't have sun like making the contact paper glue to the glass. So it's just cool enough but warm enough that we're going to be able to do this perfect weather. Is this going to work, Zach? Is it really going to work? I think it'll work. I think it's going to go so fast that you have no idea. It's scary. It is. It's, well, it'll be a little scary. Okay. You guys are good to go. Installation's going pretty well. It's a little nerve wracking because of the timing. We're using a very fast kicking mastic, which means our timing is, uh, it's gotta be good. <music> Temperature's a little hot today. It's making us work very hard. The quick set sets very quick. The sun is melting the plastic and expanding the plastic making all my pieces bigger than they're supposed to be to fit on, then the mastic sometimes it's just temperamental. It, one, it's either setting too fast or setting too slow, so. Like you're trying to hold up a big brick wall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, exactly what it's like. Fall. Don't fall. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking where the mastic pushed up so we can get grout in the edges. Oh, OK. We got a couple of repairs. We lost, lost a stone over here somewhere. I am pulling out extra mastic. Whoops. And stones. And stones there. <laughs> it's a very technical tool I like to call a plastic fork. Very technical for mastic use. We're gonna grout um, the entire thing, which basically makes sure that we get uh, grout in between every stone. And then I'm going to go back through and paint all the grout 
So I'm going to paint every crack in between every stone to reinforce the rays, the sky, the patchwork, wherever you see color, and the whole thing will, will become much more painterly. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. Cool. So Terry, what's that called, this thing you're doing? Sweeping, something you should give a try. With. Sweeping, interesting. <laughs> This is the last step, I guess, eh? Well, this is the, yeah, next to the last step. I still am gonna varnish over the grout after I paint. So you're painting the white grout in between the pieces? Just painting the grout, not painting the pieces, obviously, because the pieces won't take paint, because they're glass. So if you do splatter, you just wipe it off? Yeah. JCC. But more than that, we wanted art that reflected Eli, his energy, his light, and his joy. experience. I want to do my thank yous first to the Lehrbergers and, and, and Perlmans, first of all for choosing art. In today's world it's not easy to choose art and uh, I appreciate that. Both parents talked about uh, a thousand golden lights, a thousand points of light and there are little stars and little points of dichroic glass that are put all the way through, hopefully over a thousand, hopefully of the infinity. There is earth and air and fire and water, of course. And the seven-pointed star is for Eli because he was seven years old and it's also the star of the muse, which is basically an impossible star to draw. You can never get the calculation to be precise. It's one of those impossible mathematical equations. And from my knowledge, Eli too was an impossible mathematical equation. Anyway, it's been a blessing, it's been a prayer, it's been a privilege, and um, I th thank you for, we all thank you for this commission, and, and we thank you for coming today and dedicating this wonderful piece. Thank you. You know, art is constantly put into this category of luxury. It's not luxury, it's life. It's always being put into this little high-end box it's not a high-end box. It doesn't belong to the rich. It doesn't belong to the higher society. It belongs to everybody. It belongs. It's one of the languages. It's many of the languages. We have, we have a million languages, you know. We think that it's the alphabet and words and all of that, but that's, that's such, a, such a tiny little part. You know, art has this language to put a thousand words and a thousand sounds all in one color or all in one thing, but yet we always kind of put it in this box that it's some luxury or it's some accessory. It's not accessory. It's basic. So it uh, seemed to go pretty well yesterday. Huh? The family it was went happy. Wonderfully. Yeah. It went wonderfully. It went wonderfully. I think that the center was happy, the family was happy. We were happy because it got done and uh, this was a new technique uh, and new materials for us, so we were happy that it went very well. Mm. So. Yeah, well, I uh, thank you for letting us come on in here and watch you work your magic. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's my magic. Uh, it has been a magical experience, but, and uh, hopefully the piece will continue to give its magic. Sure will. Sure will. Here's hoping. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.